So my name is uh, Dr. Rahul Shah. I'm a consultant gastroenterologist and hepatologist at uh, Raheja Hospital in Mahim in Mumbai. And I take this opportunity on the 19th of May to talk about uh, inflammatory bowel disease as this is the World Inflammatory Bowel Disease Day. So I have a number of uh, queries which come to my OPD and a, num a series of questions which I've collated to try and answer some simple things that uh, you know uh, people tend to ask me. So the first thing is what is inflammatory bowel disease? Uh, it's a group of disorders where there is inflammation in the intestine, may it be large or the small intestine, leading to a, a, a number of symptoms which the patients come to me with. Uh, they're divided into two main categories. One is the Crohn's disease and the other one is the ulcerative colitis. The question people always ask me is why does it happen to me? And uh, I'm afraid we don't have any concrete answers about why it happens to a particular person than, than the other. But there are a number of factors which are now coming to light to guide us forward. There is a, uh, there is a concept where there is a, what we call autoimmunity, where the body's own defense system fights again the li lining of the intestine and the li lining of the intestine gets inflamed. The basic concept behind it is of a leaky gut. So some of the infections like bacteria, viruses cause the inf lining of the intestine to be inflamed, the gut lining becomes leaky, the leaky gut gets exposed to the immune system and following which the immune system attacks the lining. Patients often present to us with a number of symptoms which can be quite dramatic. So they come with a short history of uh, diarrhea with bleeding and mucus in the stool and often subtle symptoms of weight loss, uh, fatigue, anemia, uh, you know, unexplained fractures in young uh, children. And they often also come to us with other complications like fistulas uh, in the perianal region. They come to us with uh, abscess formation and, uh, and a varied amount of things like, you know, hair loss, joint pains, uh, eye symptoms. So if you have symptoms which are unexplained and you are concerned, then we certainly need to look into the uh, next step. Um, the other question is once we do have a suspicion of inflammatory bowel disease, we do a number of tests including a blood profiling, we do some stool tests and the definite test is to do an endoscopic investigation called a colonoscopy where we put a camera from the rectum into the intestine to check what we're dealing with. Once we know that we have a diagnosis of colitis, may, may it be Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, we can guide the patients forward about treatment. In terms of treatment, the treatment is not a short-term treatment like an infection, but it often tends to last for many months to years, but we need to get the disease in remission, which means that once we have the immune system activation, our job is to not only control the inflammation in the intestine, but to make sure the immune system is controlled and gets deactivated and the disease completely fades away. Now, the treatment is not short-term. It can often last for weeks, months to years, and monitoring of the disease is very important because untreated uh, conditions may lead to complications and the complications are not easy to treat. So it's better that we get diagnosed early, we treat early and achieve complete clinical, endoscopic and biochemical remission in these patients. Now the question often asked to me is that can we cure inflammatory bowel disease? Uh, so far I cannot guarantee or nobody in the world can guarantee a cure but we can certainly get into remission to achieve a complete normal quality of life for most patients in our care. The other questions I often get to uh, be asked in the OPD is about pregnancy. So pregnancy and inflammatory bowel disease, of course, if you have an active bad inflammatory bowel disease, we would not recommend pregnancy at that time. But once the disease comes under remission, pregnancy is absolutely safe to go ahead with. And the medications used for uh, this condition are also very safe during pregnancy. But it's definitely better to consult a doctor before you undertake or think about conceiving. We often get asked about the medicines uh, for inflammatory bowel disease. There are, uh, you know, three or four kinds where we, of course, use steroids in patients who have a very bad flare. It is a safe medicine to use and can be used on an intermediate term basis. A long term goal is to use an immune modulator where we tend to cut off the immune system and prevent the attack on the bowel, which then tends to achieve remission of the disease. So whenever we see a patient, our goal is to get the patient's symptoms better the first instance. And then a long-term goal is to give immune modulators, either injectable, oral tablets or otherwise, to make sure that we have the disease completely uh, in control. 
Uh, in terms of uh, medicines, yes, we do prescribe a number of medications at the start of the disease, but once you're in remission, often the disease burden, the pill burden tends to go down. And the aim is to give the least possible to the patient. Sometimes, of course, that's a very rare occasion, surgery may be required for inflammatory bowel disease. When a patient gets a fistula formation, where one part of the gut connects to the skin or to another part of the gut, or there is abscess formation when this pus gets collected, or there are any other complications which do happen in the interim, we may need to consider surgical intervention. Surgical interventions in the current day are very safe and only recommended when they are required. So there is no need to panic about surgery, but it may be the best course for the patient uh, in, in these circumstances. People often ask me, how do you prevent uh, inflammatory bowel disease? Uh, there is no sure, sure way of presenting, uh, preventing uh, inflammatory bowel disease, but uh, leading a healthy lifestyle where uh, one takes less processed, flavored, canned, tinned food needs to be avoided. And of course, going back to the basics of nutrition where we have a balanced diet between carbohydrates, protein, vitamins and minerals is the best thing to take. Uh, Avoiding smoking and alcohol does help most patients with inflammatory bowel disease and uh, leading a healthy lifestyle with exercise uh, also uh, is very useful to patients with inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, in short, I've kind of covered, you know, why it happens, what to do uh, and, you know, most important take home message is that, uh, you know, if you have an unexplained GI symptom, unexplained diarrhea, unexplained bleeding, unexplained fatigue, uh, do consult your doctor to get some baseline blood investigations and if concerned uh, a useful gastroenterology consult may be the best way forward so we can guide you to the best uh, treatment for you. I would like to thank uh, uh, your, for your time and listening to what I've been saying today and uh, if there are any concerns you can always contact me. Um, thank you.